I'm here at the uh, Council of Molina for the Ruff case. Okay. And the court took the subject matter issue under advisement. The court has issued a ruling denying his request to dismiss for lack of subject matter jurisdiction. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give? Is the truth the whole truth? Nothing but the truth. I asked Mr. Ruff to please step on the sidewalk so that Officer Hightower could perform his duties of security. He was recording the, uh, he was using his phone to record, I believe, which is fine. Uh, I just asked him to record in a safe distance that Officer Hightower could perform his duties of stopping traffic from going to a homicide scene. Uh, it happened very, very quickly. Uh, I noticed uh, Mr. Ruff threw some papers on the ground and he started walking towards the street, towards our location. Once again, even though I told him he had to stay, he has to stay back at a distance. I did give him a warning that you were to hear me and be placing him under arrest. And uh, that's when he threw the, whatever papers he had, and he came towards us. And he continued uh, in our direction. I placed him under arrest for obstructing the investigation because his attention was just, we couldn't do that, especially there was traffic holding up also. There were other vehicles asking that he move to their, People live in the area with some resident, residential neighborhoods, and there was a line of cars, about two or three, when we were dealing with Mr. Ruff, and we weren't able to speak to those people uh, being distracted by Mr. Ruff's disorderly conduct. step on the sidewalk so that Officer Hightower could perform his duties of security. Did he do that? He did not. So he what was, did he, 
Or he was being uh, he was being verbally aggressive, refusing to comply. Um, I asked him multiple times uh, if he could step on the sidewalk. He was talking. About, he was recording the. Uh, he was using his phone to record, I believe, which is fine. Uh, I just asked him to record in a safe distance at Austin High Tower to perform his duties of stopping traffic from going to a homicide scene. Did he move to the sidewalk? It, he did not. Uh, it wasn't until I told him that he has to move. I gave him, a, I don't I forgot how many uh, times I gave him the uh, directive to please move to the sidewalk so that way I was trying to do his job. But it wasn't until I started telling him that you have to go back because I wasn't going to be allowed to be on the street is when he finally did. So he did go to a safe distance to the sidewalk. And at that time, I turned around and spoke to Officer Hightower on the street in his position where he was at initially. And then what happened after that? Uh, it happened very, very quickly. Uh, I noticed uh, Mr. Ruff threw some papers on the ground, and he started walking towards the street, towards our location. Once again, even though I told him he has to stay, he has to stay back at a distance, I did give him a warning that he were interfering again and placing him under arrest. And uh, that's when he threw the whatever papers he had and he came towards us. And he continued uh, in our direction. And did you go place him under arrest at this time? I did. I placed him under arrest for obstructing the investigation because his attention was just, we couldn't do that, especially there was traffic holding up also. There were other vehicles asking that he moved to their people living in the area, some resident, residential neighborhoods. And there was a line of cars, about two or three, when we were dealing with Mr. Ruff, and we weren't able to speak to those people um, being distracted by Mr. Ruff's destroying conduct. Did um, Mr. Ruff's speech have anything to do with his arrest? No. Not at all. Um, what about your so my initial contact, the reason for being there on the scene was in a confidentiality, a confidentiality role of peer support coordinator of the department. Normally speaking, I do not record contacts with officers involving peer support issues. So I was not expected to contact any member of the public, and that's why I did not have my camera at that time. So as I understand your testimony, your arrest of Mr. Ruff was for him um, refusing to maintain a reasonable distance that you told him to be at? Correct, and it is like hindering our investigation from Okay. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. All right. Mr. Ruff, this is your opportunity to ask um, I got a whole bunch of questions. Huh? Uh, Officer Hernandez. So you just said that you saw me yelling at Eric or at Officer Hightower when you drove up. You saw me yelling or you heard me yelling? I didn't hear you. I had my, my windows rolled So up. how do you know I was yelling? The, you're, you were pretty animated speaking to him. So, so that's why I gesticulating means can volume. I, can I pause everybody here? Um, we can only have one person speaking at a time. So if he's asking a question, which we've done, and then Mr. Ruff, when he's done answering, ask your next question, OK? And then, so officer, you may proceed. Yeah, my, my windows are rolled up, so I didn't hear anything. I just saw you. Okay, so my body movements determine my volume or what I was doing in your mind. No, it was your action. It looked like you were directly speaking to him really close up to him, so. So speaking to somebody close up really directly is being loud and yelling at somebody. No, not necessarily. It's just on the street itself. It's not something you would see in an officer. You don't usually see somebody standing there talking to a police officer? Not the way you were, sir, no. Well, can you describe the way that I was talking to him? Yes, you were right up on his face, and you were... How close did you say that I was? About a foot away, maybe. A foot away? Ooh. Estimated for a while. Okay. All right. Well, I was about four feet away, but okay. okay. I got you. Yeah. So, you have to go with what he says. You can't argue with <coughs> Okay. 
When you got out of your vehicle, did you make any attempt to determine what was happening? Did you ask Officer Hightower if he was okay? Did you ask me if I was okay or needed any assistance? Yes. You did? Yes. Oh, okay. What, what did you say? I asked if everything was okay. You, did, you asked me that? I asked if the situation was okay. Like in general, are you guys okay? Oh, and, and that's going to be on your body cam or on his body cam or my live stream? Well, I mean, if you said it and you're testifying to it in open court right now, it should be recorded, right? Because I was recording the whole time. I didn't have my body worn camera. Well, I was recording. Um, so my next question. Never the I'm trying. Um, you said that you asked me several times to back up. Is asking somebody a, a lawful order? Do I have to obey something that you ask me to do? No. Okay. So at any point, did you say I'm giving you a lawful command to back up and then give me a distance that I needed to go to? Yes. Okay, what was that lawful command? What, what law was backing up that command? In the delay and obstruct the investigation. I did mention that to you. Delay and, are you citing the Tempe Municipal Code? Yes. Can you cite that for me? Not top of my head, no. So you don't know what the Tempe Municipal Code is right now no. in court? Okay. Sorry, not top of my head, no. Okay. Um, was there any element of physicalness to what I was doing? Did I threaten anybody? Did I physically get in any officer's way? Did I touch any evidence? Did I disturb the scene of the crime? Should I ask them periodically and let you answer individually? Yeah, he can. Um, yeah, I guess I would object to form. You just okay. Did I make any threats? No. Okay. Did I touch any evidence? No. Did I touch any vehicles? No. Did I touch any officers? No. Did I threaten a witness? No. Did I miscommunicate information to you? Okay. So when you got out of your vehicle, you said that you approached and, and you just said that you t testified that you asked if everything was okay. And then you immediately, did you immediately begin giving me orders to back up? No. No. Okay. Um, when I refused to back up when you were asking, what did you do? Okay, and when I refused, what did you do at that point? I mean, I continued to refuse, so what did you do when, I, when you knew I wasn't going to back up? I told you that you had to back up at a safe distance so you could do the job. Okay. Did you approach me and put your hand, or attempt to put your hand on me, aggressively walking towards me while I was taking back steps back onto the sidewalk about 20 feet? No. No? Okay. Um, did you put your hand on my chest? at all? Yes, I did. Okay, why did you touch me? And that's just the type of person I am. I'll touch you to make sure that everything is good. You were kind of aggressive at that point, but I'll usually touch people's shoulders to calm the situation down. But, um, Touching is not okay. Uh, I, I know, I, I'm... I, I, I know. Did I hand my camera off to Darian Barrett, the guy that was with me? I was holding a camera rig, and at some point I handed it over to him. Did you see that happen? Yeah, I seem to recall, yes. Okay, and then I put my hands in the air, and I turned my back to you and started screaming, help, correct? Yes. Okay, and did you put your hand on my back and push me? No. No? No. Excellent. Okay. Um, uh, so when you backed me up to the sidewalk or onto the sidewalk where I was already at and then back over to the stop sign, you said, stay right there, correct? And then you walked back to the cruiser with Officer Hightower, correct? I remember what I saw, but I did walk, what I said, but I did walk back. Okay. And then at that point, you saw me take what you called papers out of my pocket, correct? I didn't know where the papers were. Okay, well, I took papers out of my pocket, and, and you saw me throw them on the ground. Yes. And I said, one step forward, correct? 
and you said, stay right there. You don't, you don't recalling that? Okay. Well, I took one. Okay. And then, did you keep, continue to tell me to stay right there as I was taking steps forward? Um, okay, well, why did you arrest me? Because you walked back onto the street and interfered with the investigation. H how did I interfere with the investigation? You remember there was a line of cars and we couldn't address them about people wanting to get to their home. Okay, it, are you familiar with what ADHD is? I've heard of it, yes. Okay, and, and is it... Is there criminal activity behind ADHD? Like, let's say Officer Hightower has ADHD. If he gets distracted by a squirrel running across the street and can't direct traffic, can the squirrel be charged with that? I don't think squirrels can get charged with crimes. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I, I, we're specifically talking about ADHD right now, the distraction, you know, being distracted. Is it a crime for somebody to distract a police officer that you're aware of? I'm not sure what you're judging. Okay. He just testified to distracting the officer. How is that sustained? Next question. To take an officer's attention away from his job, is that illegal that you're aware of? If it interferes with the investigation, yes. And after warnings, yes. Are you familiar with Supreme Court case law, Houston versus the city of Hill? Or, or the city of Houston? It, it's, it's already, okay. This day, this is not a proper question for him to do. So to the best of your knowledge, what crime did you see me commit that you arrested me for? The Tempe City Code related to obstructing an investigation. Well, what specific element of that code did you see me commit that would constitute jurisdiction to place me under arrest and take me into custody against my will? Officer Hightower's attention had to be drawn to your actions which avoided him doing his job of stopping people from driving to a crime scene. So his attention span was the problem. Is that a question? That's a question. Is, was officers, is, is, officers High, is Officer Hightower's attention span a problem for his job duties? I didn't know how to answer that. Um, well, you, you, that's what you just said, that his attention was taken away from his duties. So I'm asking you, is his attention span a problem for him as a police officer? as a public servant. I, I, sir, I don't know how to answer that. Okay, did you, did my wife approach you and talk to you? I, I, it was your wife out there, so I don't know. There was a woman that came and spoke with you, there correct? There was a female out there, yeah. Okay, and you told this female that you arrested him for literally being in the street and distracting the officer, correct? Correct. Okay. And you also realized maybe that there was another person with me named Darian Barrett. Did, I'm, did you know who that was at the time? No, I didn't. I don't know who that was. Okay. And how come you didn't arrest the other guy that was with me? He didn't go on the street. He was standing right next to me. I'm trying. <laughs> I have ADHD too. I apologize. Okay, well, yeah. Yeah, I, I know. So how come you didn't arrest Darian Barrett? He didn't walk onto the street and distract the officer Hightower. Okay. But he was essentially doing the same thing that I was the whole time, correct? Recording you, sir? Just the same thing. We were in the same location doing the same thing, correct? Correct. Okay. And I was out in public on a sidewalk, right? You were on the street also. I was in public. On the street. I was on the street? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, was the sidewalk closed? The sidewalk was closed, sir, yes. Was there signs up stating that the sidewalk was closed? No. 
Okay. So the sidewalk. Was the sidewalk, it was, did any other people walk past Officer Hightower that you know of while he was standing there performing his duties? Nothing I know of. Okay, that's all. Is Officer Hightower in your squad? He's not, sir, no. You're a sergeant, right? Correct. So you have your own squad? I do. Um, are you familiar with Officer Hightower's medical background, I guess? No. You don't know whether he has any type of attention deficit disorder? No. So when you approached him, um, was the issue Mr. Officer Hightower's attention or Mr. Ruff's actions? Mr. Ruff's actions. Um, now you weren't, um, you don't have a body worn camera, right? Correct. So you didn't have the benefit of being able to review your body worn camera prior to this hearing? That's correct, I did not. So if you, if your testimony is backing off of what's actually depicted in Officer Hightower's body worn camera, could that be based on your inability to review your own body worn camera? That's correct, sir. I think the incident happened about nine months ago. Thank you. I'm Officer Hightower with the Timber Police Department, H-I-G-H-T-O-W-E-R. So Officer Hightower, you're also employed with the Timber Police Department? Yes, sir. And you're not as, you don't have as many service as years as Officer Hightower? No, a little bit over two years now. Um, so what were you doing on March 11, 2017? Um, I responded to an active investigation for a homicide and then that suspect also shot at police and I was instructed to conduct traffic control um, at the intersection of Ash and Guadalupe. Okay. Um, so basically, you, what were your specific duties? So at first it was just vehicle traffic. Um, we were allowing some people to walk towards closer to the scene and then later it was learned that there were some shell casings further out so then they decided to close down everything. Okay. So, um, did you, um, when did you first come into contact with Mr. Ruff? Uh, he was walking westbound towards the scene and I saw him with a video camera and I just instructed him that the media um, point was off of Kyrene and then he began yelling that I don't take orders from you okay. or something along those lines. So once you told him this, did he keep going? Yeah, he just kept walking and then so I had to type radio traffic during a active scene to advise him that he was proceeding towards them. Okay. Um, so you were wearing a body one camera, correct? Yes. Yeah, let me go ahead and please take one. So, officer, I take a look at that screen up there. Is that um, your body worn camera of this incident? Yes. Um, what are you doing right here? Uh, just directing traffic. Um, Yeah, I'm just directing traffic. Um, at the beginning of the day, there was a lot more heavy traffic, so we had two units out there at first. Okay. So, um, one second. I'm gonna fast forward it a little bit. Officer Hightower, I fast forwarded a little bit. Um, you're going to see 
pavilion walk through the area. Right there, you see a person in brown pants. Basically, you didn't tell him anything. Why didn't you stop him from going into Christ? Because at that time, we were allowing pedestrian traffic um, to go to those local businesses. Kind of in front, I believe there's McDonald's and some other businesses, like a, maybe a tire shop or something like that. So when did you actually get the updated order not to let pedestrians? I don't know the exact time, but check where you go track. Okay. Let me fast forward a little bit. And here you see more civilians passing through. Um, I'm assuming you guys got the updated order yet? Yeah. Okay. Um, and you said if Mr. Hyde, Mr. Uh, Rob came through at one point? Yes. Let me see if I can fast forward it to that part. You know why your audio wasn't turned on? Uh, just because I was just directing traffic and I knew at one point for us to turn it back on. So, okay, let me read So, here you can see it's a little later in the day. Um, do you see Mr. Ruff? Here, coming up pretty soon. Do you see Mr. Ruff here? Yes. So what's he doing right there? Um, he's recording and that's when I thought he was media. <coughs> so what did you tell him right here? I told him that we had the media point over off of Kyrie and something. What did he tell you? I just said I don't take orders or something along those lines. Did he tell you to shut up? Yes. So you basically let him go through, right? Yep. You didn't like arrest him? No, I can't leave my post right there. I'm about to leave my post. Could have you arrested him at that point? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't have arrested him at that point, no. So you disobeyed your order then? Yes, he did. So, you, did you cut him some slack here? Uh, did yes, I just advised my people down. I, uh, Towards the and did you tell the people that in the crime scene, hey, sorry, I let some guy through? Yes. Okay. Did you have any more contact with Mr. Ruff? Uh, later on, yes. Could you tell us what happened between you and Mr. Ruff later on? Um, later on, <coughs> I had moved my car further back because there was lighter traffic um, to block the street. And then um, I was watching eastbound and I hear someone yelling behind me um, and then I said that he was saying can I get your name and badge number which I provided for him he proceeded off the sidewalk which I told him can you please go back on the sidewalk um, which he refused at first and still just yelled. So Mr. Ruff came back to the scene and asked for your name and badge number? Yes. And you gave that to him? Yes. And you told him to go back on the sidewalk? Yes. Why did you tell him that? Because uh, he wasn't giving me a safe enough distance to do my job. He back far enough, and I don't know who he is, and he was acting very aggressively. Um, so I needed that space to operate, and so that my attention wasn't drawn to him, so that I could see the cars coming through behind my back, because I had to scan, you know, 180 degrees to be able to see everybody. Did you... Um have him move back to, to the sidewalk because you didn't like what he was telling you or calling you? No, that's not it. So it had um, nothing to do with his speech? No, nothing to do with the speech, but he did close the distance on me a little bit. And like I said, at that time I had no idea who Mr. Ruff was, um, so I didn't know what his agenda was. All right, well, let's go forward to that. Can I pause just for a minute and take this guy you sure. with? Mr. Fain, uh, you were supposed to be here at 2.30 for order to show cause for not paying. First of all, why are you late? I rode the bus. My guy. Okay, and why didn't you go set up your payment plan when you were supposed to when you got out of custody? And because I was having uh, anxiety. I just okay. Are you, are you working at all? What? Are you working at all? 
Do you have a job? No. Okay. Do you have any income at all? Uh, SSR. All right. You have forty-nine dollars and eighty cents in restitution that's that's owed on this, and that mm -hmm. you're gonna have to pay that. You can break it down into payments. Okay. But once that's paid off, the rest of your case we can deal with. But that you actually have to pay. Okay. So I'm going to have to meet my bailiff out at the front counter. She's going to give you an order to go downstairs and get a new payment plan, okay? So you just go downstairs today, mm -hmm. set up a payment plan, hopefully you can make it in real small increments, and then it'll be done in no time, okay? Okay. All right. Is that your jacket there, partially? I think it's my traffic vest. Okay. When we're dri yeah. directing traffic, we have to wear the, the traffic vest, or it could be my jacket. But. All right, let me uh, just play this for a couple minutes and ask you some questions. Okay. 
start on Las Cajetas and the rest of your body on camera? Yes. And I think it finishes here. So does this disc number two, does that accurately detect what the stop is doing? Yes. So the state would offer the second disc in the MS state to do the two? No. That's all I have. That's all I have. Okay. Do you have any questions for Officer Hightower? Quite a few. Okay, so <coughs> in your police report that you wrote, you stated that I approached you yelling and hostily. Yeah. Or something along those lines, right? Okay. Um, what would... what? What about what I was saying or doing as I was walking towards you was aggressive and or hostile? Yeah, uh, coming at my back and then coming off of the sidewalk towards me. And again, I did not know who you were at that time. Um, but yeah. Did you know who Darren Garrett was at the time? Can't remember if I'd seen him. I've seen you guys both now a lot, but can't remember for sure if I'd seen him before. Okay. But I never heard of your name before. I heard of Darren Garrett. Um, was the sidewalk closed to pedestrian traffic when I walked past you? When you walked past it. Was there sign? Wait, I didn't hear Yes. I said, was this? Oh. Was there a sign up saying that the sidewalk was closed? No, there was no sign. Okay. Uh, later on that night, a few hours after it had gotten dark already and I had already been arrested, did you later take an actual sign that said the sidewalk is closed and then place it on the sidewalk? I believe streets came out eventually. It's, and it's in the state's exhibit number two. I believe streets, that we have to wait for them to come and then yes, post signage and block on and that's so why that we're there at that time before the Okay. Um, when in your police report you stated that I went into a crime scene in the police report. Did I ever? Did you ever actually see me go into a crime scene? So you went into the outer perimeter of the crime scene. Yes. Well, that uh, okay. Did you ever see I'm me go? Did you ever see me go into a taped-off crime scene or designated crime scene area? No, I did not see that. Okay. Um, when your supervisor at the time, Eric Hernandez, showed up or uh, yeah, Eric Hernandez showed up. Did he ask you what was going on when he got out of his vehicle? Did he ask me what was going on? Did he say anything to either of us? Or did he, did he say anything to either of us? I believe he said something to me, yeah. He, do you recall what that was? I think it was just kind of like, are you okay or something like that. <clears throat> okay, do you, do you know what he said after that? Did he ask me any questions? I can't recall. Okay. Um, at the time when I was standing there talking to you, was I actually in the street? Uh, yes. So if I would have went from the point where I was standing to the exact same parallel spot crossing Ash, would I have to walk in the street proper to get to that same point? I'm not sure. Do, do you not understand my question? I, I haven't drawn the lines out there. I don't know if it curves or nothing. Okay. So you saw, did you see me standing on the black top of the street? Uh, I'd have to recall, but, or look at the video again, but you're out in the street where I was standing at. Okay. How far away from you do you think I was when I was talking to you? I'd say five feet. Um... When your supervisor at the time, Eric Hernandez, was asking me to step back and I refused, what happened? 
Uh, and we proceeded towards you. What, what, what was your intent when you guys proceeded towards me? To get you at a safe distance and move you back onto the sidewalk. To move me? Okay. Uh, um, during that time when you proceeded towards me to move me back onto the sidewalk, did you see Eric Hernandez put his hand out and touch me at all? Yeah, he placed his hand on me. Okay. And then... When, did you see me hand my camera off to Darian Barrett? Yes. And did you see me put my hands in the air and turn my back to both of, both you and Eric Hernandez and scream for help? Yes. During that time, did you witness Eric Hernandez put his hand on my back and push me again? I've seen that in the video, but I don't remember. You didn't see it in person? Okay. Okay. Um, do you, have you received de-escalation training? Oh, uh, yes. How come you did not try to de-escalate the situation? I did. I tried to tell you to go back on the sidewalk, and I said, have a good day, just to get you to leave. Um, however, you just continued to yell and stay on in the street, or where I was telling you to move back. Okay. Do you think that it was de-escalating the situation to approach me, to move me back? Well, we were just trying to get me back to where I could conduct my duties, proper and safely. Um, so once you're back on the sidewalk, then we get a left, but you were and give my view where you were too, on the car is making that right hand turn on the Guadalupe. Um, and then also, it's not just my attention, it's more safety. If I turn my back to you while you're standing three feet away from me, again, I don't know who you are at that point. Um, and I don't feel comfortable turning my back to you to watch the other side of the street. Did you know what I was doing? No, I did not know at that time. Now, obviously, I Well, I mean, so did you just testify that you saw me when I first initially approached and knew that I was media? Yeah, it looked like you were media because you were recording. Okay, so, so did you know what I was doing? But it didn't, when you came back up, it didn't appear that you were, quote unquote, media as far as the ones that usually come, is what I can say. <laughs> Okay. I've never been approached by media in an aggressive manner like that before. What was aggressive about my manner? Again, you proceeding towards me, ignoring my directions to step back. Okay, did you give me a lawful order that I needed to step back? Yes. And what law was backing that order up? The 22-6 Tempe City Code, delay and obstruct. And during interfering with police. Can you cite that the ver the Not verbiage exactly of that code? No. Okay. Um, do you have ADHD? No. Do you have an attention problem? No. So hypothetically, you didn't have to stand there and talk to me at all. You could have continued to do your job and not engage with me at all, right? Like I said, if I had to turn my back to you, that could put me at risk. S are you are you afraid of the public? Well, again, you were way more aggressive. You also proceeded off the sidewalk. Too. Okay. Did I threaten you? No. Did I raise my voice? Yes. I, I, uh, did I touch any evidence? No, there's no evidence. How far away from you were were you, how far away from the actual scene were you? I could give you an estimation, but I don't know. I didn't measure how far I am. Would it be safe to say about a quarter mile? Give or take. Okay. So when I was talking to you, I wasn't anywhere near the actual scene that was described by Eric Hernandez and you prior to when you guys got up on the stand right now that this was about. Yes. Okay. Hmm. Are you trained as a police officer to be fearful of every American citizen that's walking on the sidewalk? No. Okay. Are you trained in the First Amendment? Yes. Okay. Can you cite the five points of the First Amendment for me? <laughs> and you arrested me for distracting you? No, for coming off the sidewalk and hindering my ability to direct 
traffic safely and properly. Can, can you elaborate how I hindered your ability to direct traffic by talking to you? Yeah, by coming off of the sidewalk and drawing my attention, which was more of a safety concern because I couldn't properly look at both sides of the street because I was facing you and watching what you were doing. Okay. And, and do you have an obligation to talk to me or engage with me at all while I'm standing there? Or could you have ignored yeah. me? When you come off the sidewalk and within three feet of me, yes, I feel like I have an obligation to at least look at you. And I did try to ignore you. If you remember, you were speaking to me more than me talking to you after I finished the sidewalk and have a good day. When I approached you and was talking to you, was I suspected of committing any crimes? No, not at that point, except for the fact that you're coming off the sidewalk and not listening to, to commands. Did, did you see me committing any crimes currently? Uh, just delaying and obstructing the city code 26. Well, by coming off the sidewalk or taking your attention? By coming off the sidewalk and impeding my ability to properly um, do what I was tasked to do at that moment. Okay, well you keep... S what what law is there about coming off of a sidewalk? Objection. Hmm. Could you arrest me for standing where I was standing, just for standing there? Uh, if you were obstructing a public thoroughfare, which if my car wasn't there, you would have been. So obstructing a public thoroughfare in the ARS Title 28, there would have to be traffic flowing on the street, and then I would have to be standing there, and there would have to be brakes, or I would have to actually cause a physical obstruction. Just standing there doesn't constitute obstructing traffic, correct? Where you were standing, if there was traffic going, it would have been had to put on their brakes. If there was traffic. But at the time that I was standing there, there was no traffic, so I was obstructing nothing, correct? No, oh, and that's why you weren't arrested for obstructing public thoroughfare. Um, okay. So, why do you keep bringing up me stepping off the sidewalk as an element of my arrest? Because you were coming towards me and impeding my ability to watch traffic and conduct the duties that I was tasked to do with during that day. When I was coming forward, I stopped at some point, though, right? Yeah, approximately three feet away from me. And that was right in front of the bumper of your police vehicle, correct? Yes. And I did not proceed forward, correct? I'd have to rewatch the whole video, but I don't believe so. And I stood there and talked to you for three to five minutes, maybe? I don't know the exact Approximately? Time. I don't know the time. Okay, so during the time that I was talking to you, I never came forward or approached you any further than I had initially stopped, correct? Again, I would have to rewatch the video, but... So you had no obligation to stand there and continue to talk to me once you realized what I was doing and... Yes, I did have an obligation because I was conducting traffic control. Can you, can you cite the uh, uh, Tempe uh, Police Department policy that, in, that requires you to engage with me while you're doing traffic control? Yes, Yeah, I have a video here that I need to admit into evidence myself. I don't have anything to play it on, but I do have my own live stream that I was holding while he, I was talking to him. I'd like to play it and ask him some questions, but I don't have anything to play it off of. Okay. I don't expect him to let me use it. But Are you done? I, well, I don't know. No, I, I want to play this. And ask questions. So, but the question I have is, you share that with Mr. Molina before now? I, I'm, this is an evidentiary hearing. I'm introducing yeah, it. Evidence, and he asked, yeah, so, you have to, if you intend to use something, you got to let him know ahead of time, just like he's like you and now. If it's just a YouTube video, I'm not going to draft video. I just keep an evidentiary hearing for the rules that must be in the trial. Right. I have seen the YouTube video already, so 
This is a, a live stream from a different channel than DirectV. I was live streaming the whole time that this was happening. I screen recorded it like that so it, the court can see that it actually came from a live stream on YouTube on March 11th. So I'll allow it in here. I don't object as long as the court is taking any of the hearsay into consideration. So I'm just going to ask the court to take it into consideration for anything with regard to this issue. Okay? Okay. okay. Yep. Alright, so if you want this Molina to assist you in telling him what you want him to play. Just play the whole thing and I'll pause it. Okay, let me ask you one minute. It's ten minutes. Okay. And then um, if you need to like tell him to stop so you can ask him a question. Gotta call a supervisor or shut the fuck up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Okay, pause it. Third plea for. So, do you remember what what you said to me to get me to tell you to shut up and call a supervisor? Uh, I told you the media point to go. You didn't tell me that I couldn't walk down the sidewalk? I said that too. Okay. video do you see me walk past any sidewalk closure signs tape lines any official barriers that would designate that I can't go towards this direction no sidewalk the road was closed to vehicle traffic correct yeah I'm sorry this Okay, so what's playing right now, Your Honor, is the distance from my first contact with Officer Hightower to the initial tape line of the scene. I left the entire walk there to see, you can see okay. the distance. So I'm going to look down into the distance. Because he has to testify that that's actually where he is. Do you want to skip to when I get up to the tape line? Do you know where this live stream is happened or this live stream happened at? Do you know does this look familiar? Uh yeah, I wasn't there that day at that point. 
But do you know where this is? It, you don't have an approximate idea about how far away from you this is? I do not. Okay. Is this the actual police scene right here with the tape and all that? That's where the crime happened, yes. So that's the crime scene? That's where the crime happened, yes. Well, I'm asking you, is, is that the crime that's scene? The inner perimeter of the crime scene, yes. The inner perimeter. Okay. Is there, a, is there another perimeter that's designated? Yeah, some of the big scenes are the inner perimeter and then the outer perimeter. <laughs> outer perimeter. How, do you, how do you tell the public that there's an outer perimeter? Uh, by marking it off, and then we wait for streets to come, and then they oh, okay. <clears throat> okay, do you know who that was that I just walked up to? Uh, I think it was Barry and Barrett, but I can't. Barry and Barrett, okay. Right do you know approximately how long he had been actually at the, at the scene, away from where you were at? You don't know how long? Okay. Um, do you have any knowledge of him or I going past the tape line and entering into a crime scene? I wasn't there. So, so no, you don't have any knowledge? Okay. Yeah, you can play it. Can you pause it? Do you know who that was? No, I don't. Can you rewind it and get him in the shot real quick? A little bit? Maybe? Is that possible? Hey man, don't ask that terrorist to be free. Did it look like he was wearing a badge to you when he walked past? No. No? Hey, he, don't work. Can you pause it? What's your name and your badge number, partner? Now, what you just heard as I'm approaching you, was that yelling? Uh, I perceived that as I had the time, yeah. You, you, did you perceive, hey, Mr. Orders, what's your name and badge number as aggression or yelling? Not at this point, but later on, yes. Okay. Um, did that guy that just walked past approach you and talk to you too? Uh, I can't recall. Okay. Can you play it? I think it might have been one of the guys that was parked on the street that I did. Oh, uh, actually, hold on a second. Why did you let him continue towards the scene that I was seeing? Is, it the, is the guy that, I don't know if it's the same guy I did nine months ago, but if it is the guy, there was a business that was closer on that they said I could let him go to. So you were letting some people go towards the scene, just not others? If they had a business right there, yes. So I, I would have had to have been a business owner to use the sidewalk, or I couldn't utilize the business? Were there, were there living structures in that direction too? Uh, I can't recall. I don't know. Kyrene and Guadalupe, I mean, you, you work the area, right? Okay. So if I lived back there, I couldn't walk back there just if I owned a business. If you lived back there, and it depends where it was, because like I said, some of the businesses that we were allowing people to go to at the original and the earlier in the day, we stopped allowing that. Okay, just to be clear, you, you were letting some people through, just not others. Depending on where they were going. Oh, oh, oh. Why are you arbitrarily letting arbitrarily letting some people Again, through and we, we depending? Okay, wait, 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 after. Uh, so okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, why were you arbitrarily letting certain people through and 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 not certain people based on their direction of travel or what they were going to? If it, if the sidewalk or the street was closed, it should be closed to everybody, correct? Because the crime scene was developing so at first. There was a smaller crime scene, then the crime scene expanded, and then we learned where that ended at, and then that's where we receive our direction from. And the crime scene expanded from the intersection of Kyrene and Guadalupe all the way to Ash? Where we were 
allowing people here. Hmm. Okay, you talk about it. You pause it? There ain't no law about standing in a row unless I'm obstructing it. So you told me to stand on the sidewalk. Why did you tell me to stand on the sidewalk? Because you got off the sidewalk and came to Do you usually walk around, or do you usually give civilians that are walking around on the sidewalk random orders to stand on the sidewalk or move around or stand over there? Yeah, all the time I tell people to go back on the sidewalk and they leave the sidewalk and they're not supposed to. Okay. Was that a lawful order that you gave me? To go back on the sidewalk? Yes. What law was backing that up? Objection. What's your legal objection? Counsel legal conclusion. Do you know what a lawful order is? Yes. It has to have a law that backs it up, correct? Yes. Okay. And when you say that you give somebody a lawful order, that usually means that you can define the law that backs up that order, correct? Yes. Okay. So when you told me to get back on the sidewalk, what was the lawful order? 226. 22. What is that? Okay, so you're alleging that I was interfering with the crime scene investigation that was going on a quarter mile away by standing right where I was standing. It was my duties pertaining to that crime scene investigation, yes. Pertaining to your duties. And what were your duties? To stop people, and then you're not even trying to go in there anymore. You're just coming up to me and coming off the sidewalk and interfering with see how Sir Hernandez drives his driving through, which I didn't know at that time. Did you have to stand there and continue to talk to me? Like I said, I wasn't going to turn my back to you. So that was a choice that you made, correct? Sure, yes. Okay. Are you familiar with what protesting is? Yes. All right, you want to play? I'm not obstructing nothing. You just don't like the way I was talking to you. Don't tell me what to do. Don't tell free people what to do. You can ask me not to go down there, but the minute you start barking at me, you can suck my ass. You understand? Yeah, you have a nice day, too. I will. Or what? Pause it. <laughs> so earlier you testified that Eric Hernandez said something to you, asked if you were okay or something. Did you see him do that right here in this video? Oh, I see what. I thought I was going to see. Tell free people what to do. You can ask me not to go down there, but the minute you start barking at me, you can suck my ass. You understand? Yeah, you have a nice day too. I will. Oh, right there. Right. You want to pause it? I heard something it's different from you. I can't tell what you said in the video, but. So what I just heard is, hello, sir. Can you go step back over there? Is that what you heard? Okay. Did you see any, any attempt to de to de-escalate the situation, or did you take any attempt to de-escalate the situation at this point? Did I? Yeah. I told you to have a nice day and to get back on the sidewalk. Do you think it's normal to tell people to stand and do things? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last one. I said, do you think it's normal to tell people where to stand and what to do? Yes, during investigations it's normal. 
So during an investigation, you have lawful authority over my movements. If you are coming into our crime scene, yes. Or if you are just coming off of the sidewalk to antagonize me, yes. It is coming up antagonized. So do you think I was antagonizing you? Yes. And you were coming towards me, and like I said, I didn't know who you were, and that could mess with my safety. What was antagonizing about what I was doing? Like I said, not listening, coming towards me on the sidewalk. You weren't just staying on the sidewalk at a distance, talking to me. So because I wasn't being obedient... Oh, were you not done? Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You there? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. So because I wasn't being obedient is the problem. It's because you were coming into my personal space and coming off of the sidewalk, yes. Okay, why do you keep saying coming off the sidewalk? Because if you would have stayed at a safe distance, everything you've done would have been fine. What's a safe distance? Uh, approximately eight feet, so I have enough time to just react. If you were to do something, um, I can look other ways. Can you enforce a safe distance? Can I enforce a safe distance? Yeah, let's say on Avenue you have somebody standing two feet away from you. Can you tell them to get back, and if they don't, arrest them for doing not getting back? Yeah, we set up bike fences all the time, and we tell people not to come, and when they try to come through our bikes or around us, then yes. So a bike fence would be similar to a tape line, correct? It doesn't have any stop signs or anything like that. It's similar to my car. I've seen the bike lines downtown Mill Avenue, and they're all touching each other in a, in a wall, correct? So you couldn't physically go past unless you moved a bike or you jumped over it. Or you could go around it. Okay. Go ahead and play it. Did you hear your supervisor give me any lawful order, or did he just ask me to do things? He asked you to go back on the sidewalk. Okay, so I was being asked to do a lot of things, correct? I mean, I was being asked to step back. I was being asked to go over by the stop sign, correct? Yeah, you were given an order to go back on the sidewalk. Yeah. Was I given an order, or was I being asked? You were given an order to go back on the sidewalk. Can you rewind it a little bit and play this again? I, I want to make sure. Did, did you say the word order is what you're asking? Can you arrest somebody for not doing what you asked them to do? If it's a lawful order. Okay, well, how is somebody supposed to know that something's a lawful order if you don't say it's a lawful order? In the morning, you guys. Call my lawyer. I'm not. That's a physical act. You're going to lose your qualified immunity by... Hey, watch out. So watch out, dude. Don't fucking touch me. This is a standing ground safe. I can stand right here. I'm on the sidewalk now. Don't touch me. Don't fucking touch me. Don't fucking touch me. Don't
Does this video show an accurate depiction of what took place that night between all of us? Yes. Okay. How come you didn't make any attempt to de-escalate this situation when you when you saw your supervisor getting out of hand? I didn't think he was getting out of hand. You, did, you, you thought that, okay. Did you think that everything that was going on here was normal? Except he was telling me to get back, and I don't know what else to look like. Do you think it's okay to, to put your hand on, on, a, on a civilian's person? As to create distance, sometimes officers do that, but it wasn't like he forcefully pushed you. You wouldn't say that that was es escalating a little bit? No, I, I don't think so. Okay. So at any point during this interaction, did you, did you, did you personally give me any lawful order or advise me that I was doing something illegal before approaching me? I told you to get back on the sidewalk earlier on, but after certain name, I don't believe I really spoke to you. Okay. And when... S well, let's play that part. So when you and uh, Eric Hernandez walked away from me, do you know? Do you remember what he said to you? Uh, he said, "If he comes back forward, we're gonna place him under arrest." Okay. If he comes back forward, place him under. Okay. Is there did, was there any specific distance measured? Was there any location that I was told not to go past, or where to stand, where to stay, or was it? I think you said for you to stay close to that uh, stop sign. S stay close to the stop sign. Did, there was no specific distance mentioned. No, like mm -hmm. a foot away from it. No, not that. Okay. During this encounter, did you do you recall what Eric Hernandez was saying as I was taking those steps forward? Because he made a comment. No. Did you hear him say, "Stay on the sidewalk"? Uh, I don't recall. I mean, you can play it again if you don't recall. I, I just want to know if you heard him say that. Do, do you want to back it up to where I slapped the? I don't want to No, one more. Yeah. Watch out, dude. Don't fucking touch me. No, this is standing ground safe. I can stand right here. I'm on the sidewalk now. Don't touch me. Don't fucking touch me. Don't fucking touch me. Did you hear what he said? That was the stay on the sidewalk. Did you hear that? I think so, yeah. Okay. And he may he repeated that a couple times until right before he arrested me. Do you remember that? I mean, the, he has the body cam footage. We can pop that up if, if you need to. Yeah. You want to play the body cam? No, I don't believe it. Okay. Um, well, that's not what you believe. It's I'm asking if... Yeah, he said stay on the sidewalk. Okay. 
So after he told me to stay on the sidewalk several times before he arrested me, did I ever come off the sidewalk again? Uh, I you threw your papers off the sidewalk, but I don't believe your actual body came off the sidewalk. Okay. Alright. So basically, based on what Hernandez was saying, stay on the sidewalk. I obeyed his commands to stay on the sidewalk. I never came back off of it, correct? I don't remember you coming back off the sidewalk. Okay, so what then was I arrested for? Coming back towards, because he told you to stay back by the sidewalk, or the stop sign. Well, you just heard him right there after he told me to stay by the sidewalk, uh, stay by the stop sign to stay on the sidewalk several times. So, I mean, that seems very confusing, right? Uh, I mean, Damien stayed by, or Darian, sorry, stayed by the stop sign and said to stay back. Um, are you testifying to knowing and understanding Darian's state of mind during this? How are they here, sir? They're notarized affidavits of fact. I'm not objecting for the evidentiary hearing, but I'm just giving you a notice. If this never goes to trial, I'm going to object to any affidavits. <laughs> but, so are they marked? They're not marked, but I don't object. Okay, well, are you moving these to evidence? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you need to mark them. What do you mean, mark them? You have to put it evidence to the and label it as it would get you in evidence. I have other copies of the video. I said I, I have other copies of the video. that affidavits are hearsay. Yeah. It's the strongest form of evidence. It's under perjury, man. Well, as you just heard both of the officers testify, there's a whole bunch of problems with their case. I was acting under free press, First Amendment, exercising my freedom of speech, my freedom of the press, my freedom of movement, my freedom to redress grievances. Um, everything that I was doing is protected by the Constitution. Some people might not, but that doesn't give them the authority to arrest. And as you clearly heard both of the officers testify that I wasn't doing anything illegal. 
until I somehow stepped off of a sidewalk. And that constitutes, you know, somebody's attention deficit disorder making it illegal. So I, I'm done. I, I just want to go to trial already. I don't personally care what you sentenced me to. I'm appealing everything today, so it's going to freeze whatever you sentenced me to, and we're just going to kick it to a higher court. Because clearly, this one is corrupt. They turn in our communities to hot blocks. Yeah, they got glocks, handcuffs, and badges. They swear that they hot shots. They want to lock us and throw away the stop. Watch, you know, direct deal. Show you how to cop. Watch, cop, watch. Record them when a cop stops. And ignore the pig chatter when a cop talks. You don't need a top notch camera, just a cop. Watch. I gotta know your rights or you lose them. So we cop, watch.